Hi, Brickell. It's Ms. Kosh. We are looking at uh, 1.12, so 1.12 transformation of functions. Um, and so a lot of this, I think, is stuff that you already know. Um, so let's jump right in and see what happens. Um, okay, so if we have a vertical shift, that's where you'd have your function and it's moving. You'd have something at the end, it would be plus or minus d, or you'd go up or down, depending. Um, if it's a horizontal shift, shifting left or right, it's the c value inside. Um, the trick on this one, and we'll see this in a second, is it does what we would kind of expect the opposite to be. Um, oh, another thing I did notice, I think we're used to describing making it x minus c, and so that you're moving. Um, so say I have... Say I've got the equation y is equal to x minus 2 squared. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking a problem, we're moving it to the right 2. Um, what we noticed at the AP as, um, Summer Institute was that AP does the opposite of what we're used to. Um, so I think AP might write this as x plus c. Um, just pay attention. So whatever, if they say what is the c value, and you're used to it being a minus, and, but they put, they'll have to tell you x plus or minus c right here and then they'll ask you for c. So if they said it's written like this, what's the c value? Well, now we're both minus, so it, the c value is 2. But if they had put a plus sign here, and you have a minus sign there, then the c value would be the opposite sign. So just pay attention, I think, is my takeaway. Um, okay, so uh, a vertical or a horizontal shift and a reflection, these are what we call rigid transformations because they keep the same shape. Um, and so a reflection over the x-axis means that I've taken my, my y values and I've reflected them down. Okay, so I was trying to use my hand. So for opening up, and now we're opening <laughs> down. That was kind of terrible. Um, what we've done is we now have negative y values. So this would be the negative f of x. If I want to reflect over the y-axis, that means anything that was on the, in quadrants 1 or 4 is now in quadrants 2 or 3. Um, then we have to switch our, we put a negative with x. Okay, the next one, a vertical stretch or vertical shrink is based on this A value. The bigger um, A is, the more it gets stretched, so the more it gets pulled apart. Um, and then B kind of does the opposite. The bigger B is, the more it got compressed. So I like to think in a way, um, I like to describe it in a way that makes sense. So if I said something like um, Y is equal to the square root of 2X, it's technically a compression by a factor of two or a stretch of one half. I think telling somebody you're stretching by one half is confusing. So it's not wrong. I just prefer to describe this one as a compression. Um, well, okay, so a horizontal compression of, um, of two as opposed to, that's telling me that everything got, kind of got squished in. Um, these, these two, the vertical stretch, the... Um, Vertical or horizontal stretches or shrinks um, are non-rigid transformations. So the, the shape, um, this one, we just basically pick up whatever shape it is and move it or reflect it. But nothing, but the actual original shape doesn't change. On this one, we have stretched it or pulled it in some capacity, and so they're non-rigid. Okay, let's go um, a little more into detail here. It says, describe the following transformations of F. Then suppose that 2, 3 is a point on F of X. What will the coordinates be with the following transformation? Okay, so the way I like to think about these is we're going to say that this is equal to g of x. But the only thing I know about f, the only thing I know in the whole wide world, is that f of 2 is equal to 3. That's all I know. I have no idea what type of equation this is. So now they're saying, well, we need to figure out what the coordinates would be for g. So I need to figure out what, um, what the x value is for g that corresponds to this. These are kind of confusing. Um, basically, I need a new x where when I plug it into this equation, all I get a positive 2. So I want this x to be equal to negative 2. So here we have, so let's try it this way. g of negative 2 would be equal to f of negative negative 2. Okay, well, what is f of, that's f of 2. What do we know about f of 2? f of 2 is equal to 3. Okay, so this new point that we now have, the new point on g is the point negative 2 comma 3. Okay, and if we think about it, this reflected, we just said this was a reflection over the y-axis, and this original point of 2, 3 to our new point of negative 2, 3, we have reflected over the y-axis. Okay, so let's look at this next one. We're going to call this g of x. 
So this all, we have an f of x. The only x that we, only f that we know is f of 2. So we can say that g of 2 would be equal to 2 times f of 2. Well, f of 2 we know to be 3. So g of 2 is going to be equal to 6. And so what's the point that we care about? This is the point 2, 6. Well, let's see. Thinking of our, this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So we used to have the point 2, 3, and then we stretched it away from the x-axis by a factor of 2. And there we go. Okay, the next one we have, um, we can call this g of x. Well, so we're wanting to think about what g do I need to plug in so that I can find f of 2. Well, when I look at this, I need x to be 0 so that I get um, f of 2 inside here. So we can say g of 0 would be equal to 3 times f of 0 plus 2 minus 4. Okay, so this is 3 times f of 2 minus 4. f of 2, we know to be equal to 3. And then we need to subtract 4. So 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. So this gives us the point 0, 5. So what happened here? Well, we moved it to the left 2. Okay, we were at, where were we? We were at 2. We moved 2 to the left 2. We got to 0. That's good. Then we moved it down. Well, then we stretched it. Then we shifted down. So actually, I always like to do the stretches first. So we stretched it. We went up by a factor of 3. So this 3, 3 went to 9, and then we moved it down. Um, sometimes thinking through it conceptually is a little tricky, and following this process, I think, makes, makes me feel a little more confident. Okay, let's look at this one. This one is, so we're saying, well, we need to plug in all, the only thing we know is f of 2. Okay, so we want f of this, we, well, what do we plug in here? I have this negative 2x minus 4 needs to equal 2. If I add 4, I'm at 6. Divide by 2, I'm at negative 3. Okay, so the only thing I know here is that g of, I can plug in g of negative 3, and this is going to equal negative f of, oh, I ran out of space. You know what? We're going to cheat. Okay, there we go. Um, well, okay, so uh, g of, g of negative 3 will be equal to negative f of 2 times, oh, negative 3, my bad, um, minus 4, close that parentheses, plus 2. Okay, so this is negative f of, this is negative 6. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I forgot to write down the negative. I'm like, why, why am I having a problem? That's why. 6 minus 4 is equal to 2, plus 2. So f of 2, that's the only thing we know. F of 2 is equal to 3, but there was a negative plus 2. So negative 2 plus 3 is equal to a negative 1. And so I ran out of space here, but this g of negative 3 was equal to, I just said, a negative 1. So the point that I care about is the point negative 3, negative 1. Okay, and now we're going to look at some problems that do the opposite. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So this one they're saying... Find the images of the points on f. So they're giving us, um, given g is equal to this in terms of f, find the image of the following points on f. These points are on f, and they want us to figure out what the corresponding point would be on g. Let me make sure I'm saying that correctly. Find the points on f. Yes, okay. This is like saying f of 2 equals 4. Okay, but what do we know? We know that g of x is equal to 4 times f of 3x. So I need to figure out what do I plug in here so that I can find an f of 2, because that's all I know. So I want uh, 2 thirds so that my 3's cancel. So g of 2 thirds would be equal to 4 times f of 3 times 2 thirds. That's f of 2. So this is going to be equal to 4 times f of 2 f of 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, I ran out of space, but there we go. So the point that they want is the point 2 thirds comma 16. Uh, 2 thirds comma 16. The next one, we know that, what do we know? We know f of 5 is equal to negative 1. So we have g of x is equal to 4 times f of 3x. So what do I need to plug in for x to get a 5? I need 5 over 3. So g of 5 thirds 
is equal to 4 times f of 3 times 5 thirds. That cancels f of 5, we said is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So the point that we care about is the point 5 thirds, uh, negative 4. That's a positive 5 thirds, negative 4. In general, I don't like fractions written like this, but um, especially if you have thrown in any x or anything, but I wrote it that way, so my bad, whatever. Okay, f of 0 equals negative 3. So we have g of x is equal to 4 times f of 3x. So what do I need to plug in so that I can get a 0? Well, 0. So g of 0 is going to equal 4 times f of 3 times 0. 3 times 0 is 0. This is 4 times f of 0. We just said f of 0 is negative 3. 4 times negative 3, I don't know why I wrote all these dots and parentheses, but there you go, is equal to negative 12. So this is the point 0, negative 12. Okay, let's go a little bit farther. You're hanging with me. Good job. Keep, keep on keeping on. Find the points which correspond to the following points on G. So this is now telling us that G of 2 is equal to 4. But we know that G of X, so this is still, uh, this is the second part of the same problem. Do you see how we're attached there? Um, this is 4 times F of 3X. Well, so G of 2 means I take G of 2 is equal to 4 times f of, well, 3 times 2. Uh, okay, g of 2, we know to equal 4. This is 4 times f of 6. Well, so what we find here, we just want to solve for f of 6. So I can divide by 4, and I have that 1 is equal to f of 6. Or another way to say this is that my, when I have an x-coordinate of 6, my y-value is 1. Okay, and here comes the next one. This is telling us g of 5 is equal to negative 1. Now, there's other ways to think about some of these. Um, you could think, well, I'm taking this number, dividing it by 3 to get the new x, and then taking that number and multiplying it by 4, and that works just fine. I just get confused as to which way they're asking me to go. On this one, what did we do? We took the x value, multiplied it by 3. We took the y value and divided it by 4. So that's what we're doing it every time. And if that makes sense to you, fantastic. But I, I do struggle to know, am I going from here to here or here to here? Like this, from F to G or G to F gets me a little confused. So G of X is equal to 4 times F of 3X. So we know that G of 5 would be equal to 4 times F of 3 times 5. Um, so G of 5 was negative 1. is 4 times F of 15. Divide that, we get 1 fourth. And so I have a net, well, negative 1 fourth, my bad, is equal to f of 15. So this is the coordinate, 15 comma negative 1 fourth. Okay, and then the last one, this is, oh, my notation here. Did y'all catch that? Uh, that's just totally wrong. G of 5 is equal to negative 1. Um, I have somebody at the door, and I'm ignoring them, so we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so g of x is equal to 4 times f of 3x. Um, and I, this is g of, g of 0 is going to be equal to 4 times f of 3 times 0. g of 0 is equal to negative 3, is equal to 4 times f of 0. So divide, and I get the point 0 comma negative 3 fourths. Okay, let me know if you have any questions or, or you need any help. Go practice.